In this video, we're going to see how to populate a Java object from a web form using Spring Boot and Timeleaf. First, let's get a lay of the land. We have a simple page here called Start HTML. It acts as our home page, and really we want to put things on there that the user wants to use 80% of the time they're going to go to our site. In other words, try to avoid something like a login page or a splash screen. Think of what the user is coming to your site to do and make that the first page that the user sees. In a previous video, I created a specimen DTO, and this is just a typical DTO in the, in the land of Java. We have some attributes here. I probably want to jot these down. I'm going to go ahead and just copy them. And then after that, we have some getters and setters, the toString method that's overridden from Java Lang object, and the equals method, which is over, also overridden from Java Lang object. So that's already been created. We have a controller, which we call plant places controller here, and this is meant to respond to events from the user. So what we want to do is we want to be able to populate the specimen DTO and receive the populated specimen DTO in our controller. So with that, let's get started. Here's what our page looks like right now. Nothing terribly fancy. Let's go in and find that start page, which is under source main resources and then templates. And here we go, here's our page. So a couple things I wanna do. First of all, at some point, I wanna go ahead and make this HTML, XHTML strict. Hold that thought, we'll come back to that in just a moment. But first, it's just a normal HTML page. And we see something we did in our previous video where we could pass a Java object to this page and it would render that object for us. So it's an HTML page, but it has the advantage of integration with Spring Boot via Timeleaf, and therefore it also has integration with our source code. So let's start by making a normal HTML form. I'm just gonna say form, and then action equals, and we're just gonna do pound. We're just gonna say, okay, uh, nothing crazy here. But the reason is we're going to punt over to th colon action, which is a tag that comes to us from the Timeleaf library. You see it's referenced here on line number two. So th action, and then we're going to say equals, double quote, at symbol, open curly, and then slash, save specimen, and then close curly, and then terminate that double quote as well. So a little funny syntax, but essentially what we're saying is... Uh, this one, we want to go to the save specimen endpoint. As a matter of fact, as I look at it, I need to add a slash there to indicate that that's an endpoint. Now, okay, let's kind of put two and two together here. Let me go ahead and remember that's called save specimen. Let me run back to my controller because now I need to make an endpoint for this. So in my controller class, I'm going to make just a dummy method public uh, void save specimen. Okay, uh, more to come on this in a moment but I will go ahead and associate it with the request mapping and value equals slash save specimen. So do you see now how this matches up? This thing called save specimen means we're associating this method as an endpoint that this form will submit to when the user submits that form. So that's the magic of the th action. Now let's say th uh, colon object equals and then double quote this time dollar sign curly, and we're going to say specimen DTO. And what we mean with that is we are going to populate a specimen DTO object from this form. So close the curly on that. And then finally, let's say method equals get. Um, probably would be okay without that, but remember how our endpoints work, where we can qualify these endpoints based on things like the request method, the headers, and other parameters that get passed along. So at this point, we have our form set up. Now, you might remember a few moments ago, I mentioned that we're saving to a specimen DTO, and I said I'm going to copy these values because I might want to use them right later. So let's go ahead and paste, and I'm just going to trim off all of the excess Java stuff and leave us with only, there we go, only the attributes. And we'll take off those semicolons in just a moment as well. So trim off the Java stuff. Uh, okay, and almost there. A little bit of massaging here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make input fields for each of these. Although actually specimen ID, we could probably assume that one's auto-generated. Let's, for cleanliness, let's take that one off. So we'll just say here latitude and kind of assume that as a label. And then I'm going to say input type equals text in quotes. And then we'll say name equals 
Uh, and you see here's latitude. Well, I'm going to copy this because I have a feeling I'm going to need it again in just a moment. And then we're going to say th colon field. And the th identifier is important because, again, that's going to point to our library up here. So th colon field equals double quote asterisk and then curly paste close curly and then terminate. And just for simplicity, let's go ahead and add a line break on this. So what we're doing is we're giving it a normal HTML name, but then we're also telling it which attribute of the specimen DTO we want to associate this with. Now this will start to go a little bit more quickly as I can uh, do a bit more copy paste magic here. And you can probably think of some ways to automate this, but uh, uh, nonetheless, give me just a moment. And you see, that's one thing I love about video is I can pause it, do work, and save you a little bit of time watching the video. But nonetheless, if you see here, I have wired up latitude, longitude, description, and plant ID into this form. And we're also going to need some kind of submit button. So let's go ahead and make that. So we'll say button uh, name equals submit. And then type equals submit and then value equals zero. And then we'll just say submit and close the button like so. So very simple form and we save. And a little bit of spacing there. Now, legitimate question is, where does the specimen DTO come from? Well, remember that to hit this page initially, we just hit that slash start endpoint with the get method. Let's go back and take a look at that. And by the way, I did, I paused the video and did a bit of refactoring. I had this method called read JSON, which actually fits better for the method above because that's the one dealing with JSON. So just if you're following along, just note I made a minor change to this name. Okay, we have to get that specimen DTO. We have to at least create an object of specimen DTO and provide it to our page. And the way we do it in Spring Boot is a little bit funny in me growing up with old school Java, this took a minute to get used to, but nonetheless, we simply add a parameter to our method called model. We'll go ahead and call it model. Now remember, this is when we're rendering the page. It's not submitting the page, it's purely rendering the page. Model dot add attribute. And by the way, take a look up at line 38. You might remember we actually already did this um, in a previous video, but nonetheless, good for a refresher. So model dot add attribute. And then we'll say specimen DTO. And then we'll say new specimen DTO. For, for speed of the video, I'm just creating, I'm calling a constructor here. You could probably think of some fancy auto wired ways to do this as well, but nonetheless, that'll work for us. So with that, let's go back and see if our page renders. And sure enough, we see the page is rendering just fine. Maybe not very pretty, but it is rendering fine. Now, I don't have anything set up to receive this just yet. It goes to an empty method. I can go ahead and fill a few things out and hit submit. And we're going to get an error page because there's nothing set to receive it. So let's fix that part. If we take a look at our start, we know that start is submitting to an endpoint called save specimen, and we know that it wants to send a populated specimen DTO. So here again, let's go back to our controller. Scroll up a bit and we'll see this method that we're calling for save specimen that's mapped to the endpoint for save specimen. Let's do a little housekeeping first. Uh, we know actually it should not return void, it should return a string, or uh, it can either return a string, oops, sorry, a string, or an object. Uh, for an object, we need a, a different kind of model. But nonetheless, the string will just kind of refresh us to a different page if we want. For the moment, we only have one page. So I'm going to return start, which is the name of our HTML template. Uh, I would like to give the user some confirmation. But for our purposes, we can just run this through the debugger and, and make sure that we're seeing what we expect to see. Now, part two is equally interesting to part one, and that is, how do we receive this object in the save specimen method? Once again, as an old school Java programmer, this weirded me out at first until I got used to it. If we want that specimen that the users populated on the HTML page, we simply add the object to this method signature. Specimen DTO, specimen DTO. I'll just expand and at some point we're going to want to do something with this specimen DTO. So I'll say specimen DTO dot set plant ID, just something I can kind of dummy up here and we'll give it the number 13. We'll come back to that at some point as we as we go ahead and enhance this method. But we can do a quick 
proof of concept here because if we take a look at the start HTML page, notice something interesting, a carryover from before. We're already invoking the toString method on the specimen DTO. So as we submit this, we should be able to see our changes up in this label, your specimen is. So let's take a look. I ran through some previous data to just kind of try things out. So you see I currently have Paul Paul season in there with a latitude of 39.74 and longitude of minus 85, uh, 84.51, uh, my own home city of Cincinnati. We'll go ahead and change that to 39.75 and 84.50. And then we will call this one walnut tree and plant, uh, we'll just call it like 25, something like that. Now, if all works well, when I hit submit, what will happen is this will go over to the controller and then it will refresh this page and the data that I've entered will appear at the top here. And there you go. You see the data submitted from this form to our controller and right back uh, when the page refreshed, it showed the data we submitted. I can do this as often as I want. We can say Echinacea. Of course, I pick one that's a little hard to spell, but nonetheless, uh, Echinacea, there we go, and you see, sure enough, it has responded. So that's a look at how to populate a DTO or any Java object using Timeleaf and Spring Boot. Quick summary here, we need a DTO. We need a controller with a couple of different methods, one that is going to simply prepare the page and make that DTO available via model add attribute. And by the way, that DTO should be a standard Java DTO, in other words, private uh, encapsulation, so private attributes and then public headers and setters. So our DTO, our controller class, and we have the method that prepares the page, and then we also have the method that receives the results from the page. Of course, the page itself, we know we need to import this Timeleaf library, and I'll tell you what, before I commit, I'll go ahead and put the XHTML strict up at the top here, because I promised to do that. We need our form action pound, TH action, and the uh, endpoint where we're going to submit, TH object is what we're going to populate method is the HTTP method that we're using. And then we have a series of attributes that live on the specimen DTO and a submit button. So I hope that was helpful. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.